which historical legacies of globalization do you believe have had the greatest impact on our world today? I believe that colonization of the Americas had the greatest impact on our world today, whose lasting impacts can be felt today in racial tensions worldwide and unbalanced economies between Eurocentric countries and other areas of the world. In the 1500s, the most powerful countries such as England, Spain, and France started to build up their empires to become the most powerful country. Each of these countries tried to gain power by using imperialistic methods to gain more territory over other lands. In 1492, Christopher Columbus sailed west hoping to get to India, which was rich in exotic spices and silks. Instead of finding India, he found the New World, which is known as North America. The European governments wanted to claim the New World for their own because it had plenty of valuables that were desirable and rare. As a result, the Grand Exchange started. Many goods were traded to and from the New World. However, diseases were introduced to the natives of North America and they lost their land and resources in the process. Because the European governments needed people to work in the New World to get these resources, everyone scrambled to Africa to get slaves to do the work for them. The Berlin Conference was held to peacefully decide who would control which parts of Africa. The Europeans benefited from the raw resources in Africa and slaves who worked to get resources from the new colonies like the sugar they would put in their tea. These historical legacies have impacted us today. For example, Belgium and Germany, the former rulers of Rwanda, treated the native Tutsis better than the Hutus because the Tutsis looked more European than the Hutus. This long-standing conflict resulted in the Hutus committing genocide against the Tutsis in a brutal civil war. Another example of the impact of the slave trade are the racial tensions that are catching the headlines on the news in the U.S., such as the Ferguson shooting of the unarmed African American in 2014 resulting in the Black Lives Matter movement in the U.S. In terms of economic impact, because Europeans had the largest trading territories, former European colonies, such as the U.S. and Canada, are more developed with stronger economies and a higher standard of living compared to underdeveloped countries in Asia and Africa. What aspects of economic globalization should we be most concerned about? Companies in developed countries like Canada and the U.S. are selling products for cheaper to the citizens because companies can get their products made in third world countries for cheaper and sell the products in the developed countries to make a larger profit. Because people can afford to buy things in these more developed countries, it keeps the economy strong. However, in undeveloped countries like parts of China in Vietnam, people are making very little which keeps their economies weaker. As a result, the developing countries' governments can't afford to upgrade infrastructures like cleaner markets and better road conditions. Personal Vision of Prosperity My personal vision of prosperity is a world without wars or terrorist groups and a better quality of life across the world by having better wages and working conditions for poorer countries like Bangladesh and Vietnam. Currently, a woman who works in the garment industry gets paid an average of $38 American a month for working 60 hours a week. When we were in Vietnam, our tour guide got paid $7 a day even though the 30 people in our group each pay $20 for the tour. In Canada, we get prices that are cheaper because companies can pay workers less if they are offshoring 
or outsourcing. Either way, their products are being made cheaper in other underdeveloped countries. Companies can pay people less because the people of the less developed countries are desperate for work to feed their large families. I believe if my version of prosperity was reality, everything would be more expensive and people wouldn't be able to afford things they want and would spend their money on items they need. Companies wouldn't be able to sell their products for cheap because they would have to make more money in order to pay their employees better wages and improve their working conditions. People would spend less money on items such as new clothes, electronics, and cars because the price would increase, which would slow down the consumption of products. This would be better for our environment because there wouldn't be as much consumption of resources if people weren't buying as much. However, our economy relies on the growth of demand because of this system, my version of prosperity would slow down the economy. So we would need a new economic system. Therefore, my version of prosperity would not be suitable under the current economic and trade policies. Based on your lifestyle, what responsibilities do you believe your generation will be asked to fulfill in order to make our world a better place? Based on my lifestyle, I believe our generation will have to focus on improving the environment and our ecological footprint. Canada's ecological footprint is currently 7.8 and we have 20% of the world's cleanest water. I believe we need to find a way to reduce carbon emissions because we rely on cars and technology too much. The biggest factor of global warming is the amount of fuels burned and the other largest environmental destruction that humans cause is the amount of garbage we produce. Global warming is already causing environmental changes such as droughts, flooding, and tropical storms. These can cause a deprivation in natural resources and a loss in jobs. Greenhouse gases also warms up the ocean, which can cause a decrease in the population of fish, which many people rely on for jobs and food. Because of these effects on the environment, our generation will have to reduce fishing until the population of fish has increased to their natural levels as well as recycling and composting more as an alternative to throwing things out and creating more garbage than Earth can sustain. Also, we will have to find clean, environmentally friendly ways to run our cars and factories that will release less CO2. We can reduce greenhouse gases by using electric cars and create electricity through solar and wind power instead of burning fossil fuels and plant more trees than we cut down. Find one quote you think reflects your attitude towards globalization. It is a civilizational wake-up call. A powerful message spoken in the languages of fires, floods, droughts, and extinctions. Telling us that we need an entirely new economic model and a new way of sharing this planet. As I mentioned in question four, we are slowly destroying our planet. The author, Naomi Klein, shares a similar perspective described when she says, spoken in the language of fires, floods, droughts, and extinctions. We need to find ways to decrease our ecological footprint or Earth won't be able to sustain us. However, the most effective way to reduce greenhouse gases is to use cleaner energy sources such as solar power and wind turbines. The only problem is countries like Canada are so dependent on oil to keep their economies going that governments are less willing to try alternative sources of energy. Other countries like China and Vietnam can't afford to switch to cleaner energy sources as it is cheaper for these countries to burn fossil fuels rather than to turn to alternative sources of energy. The speaker voices the same opinion in the line telling us we need an entirely different new economic model. 
If we take the necessary risk of making these changes, the wealthier and more developed countries will have to help pay for these changes within their own countries and other countries. If everyone does make the necessary changes needed, other countries that, that rely on oil will have to find a new way to sustain their economy or there will be a decrease in the welfare of their economy.